today on Divorce Court. Aaron, your ways is not the holy grail of all ways, Mr. Prodigal Son, that you think that you are. Cher is verbally abusive. You shouldn't be speaking to me that way. When it comes to me and my mouth, I just have no chill. We used to have sex multiple times a day. Can't go from that to nothing at all. It's like going from steak to going to hamburger helper. Nobody wants that. It was no need to get married if that's what you wanted to go for. You can't sex somebody if they don't look sexable and they hygiene looking all terrible. You run around here looking like a, a Miss Dwarf Rick Ross. Nobody want all that mess on their face. You're not ZZ Top. Cut that mess off. We can never find that common ground to the move forward. If it's not gonna be conducive for both people, it's no need for even having it. That's why I think we need this divorce. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Sherry Shepard and Aaron Shepard. Mr. and Mrs. Shepard, you have been married for nine years, but separated for the last two, and you do not want to be married anymore. Ms. Shepard, you want $3,200 from Mr. Shepard as you leave this union. But before we get to that, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your marriage and why you're here in divorce court today? Your Honor, I'm here today because I'm just tired of being broke, busted, and disgusted, OK? <laughs> when I got married to Mr. Shepard, I had a job, he had a job, we keep jobs, we do what we do, and we have nice things, okay? Right. Somehow, somewhere down the line, he thought my mindset of having a mediocre life was going to change. That's never going to change. I like things, and if I have to work 40, 50, 60, 80 hours to obtain those things, I'm going to do what I have to do. And I expect him to do the same thing, but he doesn't. He's a penny pincher, and I can't, I can't deal with that. Give me some examples of his penny pinching. Okay, one example, we, we had a family cruise. I had a daughter who graduated college. I want to go on this cruise. It cost it a cer certain amount of money. Well, we talked about this. We planned this. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to put half, put the down deposit down, and you're going to have to pay the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I put the deposit down, and then every time it came for the payments, uh, Mr. Shepard wouldn't pay, ready, so yeah. I had to pay. And then we get to the point to where it's time to go on a cruise. I'm like, look, okay, since I paid for the cruise, can you just pay for the transportation to Florida, from Florida, and pay for all the excursions? Oh, yeah, I got that. He worked. He, he's supposed to have it. He always say he don't got no money, but he always have money because he always stashed it somewhere. So we get down to the cruise. He paid for us to get down there. We get on the cruise. I want to go do all these excursions that I had planned. We don't got no money. All of a sudden, I don't got that. We can't do this. And, but he managed to buy him like a half a case of some expensive wine, or actually liquor, so he could bring back home and sell it half for himself. <laughs> okay? Uh, you, you, but, you, you can't deny he has an entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> uh, Mr. Shepard, what, what happened with respect to the cruise? Okay, so, Your Honor, pretty much what happened, I started working at the... When we first set up for it, I was unemployed for a little bit. I started driving cabs. I drove for, like, 30 straight days. I did have some money. In retrospect to what she says, yes, some of it, I did not come up with the amount that she did want me to, but I did come up with what I felt was fair and what I was able to come up with at the time. You did the best you could. Exactly, because I had other bills and stuff to pay that I was paying, and like I said, prior to that... I got the I same did, bill. Was, I was unemployed for a little bit, but uh -huh. I did contribute to it, and she likes to make it like I didn't do anything at all, which Dang, is what definitely Mrs. Shepard, what are you dying to say? <laughs> all I'm saying is you can't use the word fair. Fair means the cruise is 6200 you pay your 31 That's fair. You didn't pay half of the cruise, and then past that. I paid it. It's good. Fair would be you pay the trip going down, the trip coming back, and excursions in between. Mm -hmm. That's fair. You can't use words fair when you're not going to do what's fair. D let me ask you this. No, there's the word fair, and there's the word capacity. And capacity means what he's able to do. Capacity was means... He, was he employed to the extent that he would have enough to pay his bills and put that amount of money on a discretionary event? That's of no never mind to me. Really? She's no. she's right, Your Honor. She's telling the truth on really? that. That's of them, no. When we, when you, you don't sit, care. You, no, when you sit down and you plan, and you come up with this plan, then you hold the plan. You don't devour. He had a job. He left that job. Did he tell you that? He when leave you made jobs. plans, he had a job. Yes. What what happened with this particular job? Do you recall? He'll tell you they, you know, they don't fire him. He walks away because he gets agitated. He don't like how somebody's talking to him. I work in mental health. I don't like how patients come running at me. I don't like how people come targeting me. But I still have my job. I don't like going to work every day. 
I want to sit on my butt. But no, I always have to go to work. Mr. Shepard, uh, are you one for walking off jobs? I have left a job or two, definitely. Three. And, and, <laughs> and, 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 and what is behind that? Um, usually it's, it's, to me, it feels like I'm being disrespectful. Like, I deal with a lot at jobs. I'm willing to take a lot of different things, but I don't like being totally disrespectful. I believe what happened what, to Tom what, before what that... What constitutes totally disrespectful? Because okay. it seems to happen to you a lot. It or does. at least fairly often. It happens a fair amount of times. Um, just people, when it gets to the point that I feel like either I need to go or I'm gonna have to lay my hands on somebody, I think it, I, instead of me going to jail and her having to come spend money to bail me out of jail because I didn't attack somebody at work, I think it's best for me to leave that environment. That's the way I look at it. I'm not a violent <laughs> person, but for me to feel that way, I'm a very calm, do, cool, do, collective individual. Do you individual. think you get angry or upset quickly or easily? No, absolutely not. Because <laughs> absolutely most people not. don't have to walk off jobs fairly frequently because of the way they're spoken to. It's... So it would seem to indicate that the common denominator is you getting annoyed by what average bosses say. And usually I ignore that. I blow it off, I gaff it off, it's not a big issue, but sometimes it is like to a point where I think you know, it's best that we vacate the situation so it's not a major issue mm -hmm. for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because then if we got to spend bail money for me to get out, that's I another bill not paid. I understand that. That's neither here nor there. Why don't you tell me what else he does with respect to employment that makes you busted, broke, and disgusted? It's, that alone is enough for me. When you are a husband and you are a father, you don't have the liberty to just walk off of something without right. having something secure. <laughs> That's just it. I come from a family, and I, I, I chill with people where our responsibilities is our responsibilities. So if I have to go get two jobs, three jobs, whatever it is, you go do what you have to do, and you make it work. The answer is never, I don't got this. Right. And he's okay with, I don't have this. I'm not okay with that. And see, I'm never going to be okay with that. Mr. Shepard, My thing is this, what I was gonna say is, she says that, and then it's to the point where I'm working, because I've worked two and three jobs before. I've worked 60, 70 hours a week. And then it becomes an issue of her complaining. Oh, well, you working too much. When are you going to take mean? time to see your kids? When are you going to have time to do this? It can't be both. Either you want me working and making all the money or you want me At working. Home, yeah, like, boy. I can't, I can't do, it can't be right and left. It can't be up Don't and down. You do you complain when he works mm. I complain, mm. I do complain at times, mm. but the same thing, I'm constantly working overtime, but I still come home, wash clothes, clean, cook, take care of them same dang children, take them to doctor's appointments and everything, even on my lunch break. Right. So I, I do don't the understand. And then I have time to try to sleep with you, even in my time, just lay there and say, get it. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, you... <laughs> but, but it happens. You get your bed, that's and it's all good, and I can right go there. to sleep to start the next day. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Shepard, I'm getting a picture of a woman who feels like she's giving everything and getting nothing in return. Mm -hmm. I also understand there's some issues with respect to cheating, so I want to turn and, and speak to those. One day, I walked up on this video that he took of him in instructing some female to play with her womanly parts. No woman on this planet is gonna let you videotape their JJ, but you ain't sticking no dipsticks nowhere near. <laughs>
not true, your honor. Okay, Mr. you Shepard. had two videos it's of two separate true, looking honor. chicks, so they both it's... just let you videotape. They were JJ's. Mr. Mr. Shepard, what happened with respect to the videos? Now, as far as the videos go, yeah, I will say it was video in my phone. However, no, it was no intercourse. It was something that I was doing. Another one of what my were little. What you doing? One of my other entrepreneur avenues that I was pursuing. <laughs> And, you know, my, I've never cheated on my wife before. I don't... I'm not a cheater. I don't condone it. I don't like it. We've had issues with her when it never comes cheated. to her being sneaky. Then what about you're saying when I went those videos job. were porn videos that yeah, you were going much. to say? Yeah, pretty much. I'm a director. I wasn't in it. I'm not there. Directed so on I, his phone, your Well, I'm gonna record half of phone, it. If I'm gonna record, real. I'm gonna record the whole thing, right? Why? Well, well, you, you feel what I'm saying. If you're gonna record something, <laughs> I'll record Leave half of it. <laughs> Leave Joe alone. Okay, yeah. all right. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry. He doesn't want to hear about it. He certainly don't want to talk about it. And then she brings up this stuff. But, yeah, I catch her in the middle of the night texting guys she love them and things like this 3 o'clock in the morning on instant message. Now, that's direct. That ain't no falsified evidence okay. or anything else. And that's actually is. reality. That's going on. You're meeting okay. up with guys. You're having to no. take you to meet guys and things. That's crazy. That's crazy. You're supposed cr to be getting tutored, but you in movie theaters watching movies. That ain't no... You studying in the movie theater in the dark. Who's studying in the dark? Please tell me. We you just studying. You studying in the dark. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, Mrs. Shepard, we're going to have to turn to you. Are you making inappropriate phone calls and doing inappropriate things with other men? No, ma'am, that's not Email. inappropriate. No, no, let me tell you something. The, the guy that I told I love you to, I will always love him. He, was a, he is still a best friend of mine to this day. I was going through a rough situation, and he paid the down deposit from my place and for me and my kids to be okay. This is before me and him. It was a friendly it I love It was a you. friendly mm. I love you. He had been going through some things, and I had let him know, look, I love you, I will always love you. So and I'm going to tell you to your face, part, to his face, I don't care, because it is what it is. Okay, I got you. But the but, but friend with the movie theater, he was tutoring me, and yeah. I passed my class, and I it was his birthday, did. and so I went to the I movie. I bet you did pass that class, I'm sure. <laughs> he passed his, too, didn't he? He So I'm going to turn my attention. Mr. Shepard, you say there are other sneaky things that she does, and I want to know, know what they are. Face. And we were supposed to be going out to dinner. All of a sudden, she gets a call, and now she needs me to go take her to meet somebody somewhere. She gets out of the car, rides their car, gets in there. It's in there for almost 10 minutes, whatever long it was. It was too long for my comfort. Plus, you want me to part way down here for what? Mr. Shepard, you say your wife canceled on you with an event and then went out with someone else. Why don't you tell me what happened? So, yeah, pretty much what it was, Your Honor, we were supposed to be going out to dinner. We uh -huh. had both been at... I had been at work out running all day. She had running errands and things like that. And then uh, we met up finally. And in the middle of us supposed to be going to dinner, out to eat something that was her idea, Your Honor, because we hadn't been spending time, all of a sudden she gets a call and now she needs me to go take her to meet somebody somewhere. Now, we get to this parking lot. It's at a little restaurant. And she tells me, I'll oh, park right here, but yet they park about 10 spaces away down. She gets out of the car, rides to their car, gets in there. It's in there for almost 10 minutes, whatever long it was. It was too long for my comfort. Plus, you want me to park way down here for what? If you're just going to talk to somebody or meet somebody to get whatever it is, what'd you get? Well, let's see. What'd you get? I don't even remember that situation. <laughs> yeah, and he could have brought sure. us behind to the yeah. window if that's what he wanted. She I don't, wouldn't even get it. She don't remember down. nothing. Do when you it's think her turn. she would have brought you along for an illicit? Yeah. Interaction. Yeah. Yes. You really do. I do. I'm okay. Because what was the purpose is. of it? I, I got it, Mr. Okay. Shepard. All Mr. Right. Shepard, I'm going to ask you this. You say that he's verbally abusive. Why don't you tell no, me? No, he's not verbally abusive. I'm the verbally abusive. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You say she's verbally <laughs> she abusive. She is. Absolutely. Why don't you tell me about that? Okay. So, like, one of the times she's telling me to get the F out of the house, okay? So, we talking about whatever. She gets upset. Well, you can just get the F out. It ain't Fine. whatever. You're calling me Stop. selfish and I'm not selfish. Stop. I'm like, that's fine. I leave. I'm getting my stuff together. She's like, you're not moving fast enough, you bitch. Throwing my stuff down the hallway. And I'm like, yeah, you're being real selfish. And then she throws my DVD player and cracks it up against the wall and it breaks. This is ridiculous. Like, she's talking to me this way. Like, she wants to be the man. I'm supposed to be the man. She wants me to take charge and then she doesn't want me to take charge. Like, she's confused. Like I said, she like to live in a falsified reality, y'all. Right. 
and then you're calling me MFers and all this other stuff. That's not my name. Right. I don't call you those things. <laughs> I don't call you out your name. I call your name. I call you Sherry. I got your you. Your Honor, she I got feels you. like she can express any and everything that she feels isn't the way that she wants it to go until it's my turn to talk about what I want to talk about. That's and not then true. all of a sudden, it's a problem. It's whining, you complaining. Mm -hmm. Why are you bringing up old stuff, this and that? But you'll bring up stuff from any Timbuktu, under the rock, anything you can find and think of at the time, because it's not you. And then when it turns to you, Face the own mirror that you like putting up to other people. I That's can the way I face my mirrors. I got you. I got you. I'm so glad you're getting a divorce. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know what I need to do next, and that's determine whether or not Mrs. Shepard is owed $3,200 from you, Mr. Shepard, and that's what we're going to talk about. Mrs. Shepard, you say Mr. Uh, Mr. Shepard owes you $3,200. Why do you say that? I had a Montero Sport. Uh-huh. I asked him not to drive my vehicle. I had, was getting my vehicle prepared to um, be a part of a truck club. I didn't want the vehicle touched, right? I get in the shower, I come out, my truck's gone, he's gone, I get a call from his mom, and his mom's like, he's been in a bad accident. Oh. So the same truck I told him not my to get truck. in, he got in. He, he, he got in it and it got wrecked, like completely totaled out. The reason I'm asking for the money is because when um, I went to go get a new vehicle, one, his insurance paid for it, but they um, downgraded my, my, the value of my vehicle. So I only got like $1,200 back. And then the vehicle I needed to get was costing $3,200. Mm -hmm. So I put that towards it and I had to take a little bit of money out my 401k in order to get me a new vehicle. And I'm more upset, not with the fact that he wrecked my car, but the fact that he thought that since his insurance handled it, he didn't have to help me come up with a down payment for another vehicle. Okay. If you'd have never got in the car, it wouldn't have been it never would have happened. Mr. Shepard, your response to that? Yes, I did take the car, Yana. She claims that she told me not to drive it. I didn't hear. We drive each oh, other no. cars all the time. Anytime she want to drive my car, it's not a problem. The reason I took her car was because I had just brought this new CD. Her sound system was better in that car at the time. <laughs> so I wanted to hear my CD in the car. Now, I did go, I went to my mom, I had to handle some business on the way, coming back, a drunk driver wound Hit up you. hitting me. Okay. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't me yeah. driving reckless. If it right. was, every time we go somewhere, she wouldn't ask me to drive and not right. want to drive herself. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Mrs. Shepard, his insurance paid you. You're only allowed to get recompensed for the amount of money that you actually lost. Your loss is based upon the car that you had and how much it would be to replace that car at that age, in that condition. That's so you okay. don't, and that's what the insurance company gave you. What you want is money on top of that in an effort to replace the car, which is not what the courts do. So I can't give you that. Mr. Shepard, you get, you're, you're done and it's over with. I will say to you, be less interested in nice things. Be more interested in kind acts. I think that you are... <laughs> somewhat uh, enamored of that which the Joneses had. No. Oh, yeah, you do. And you got to work 30, you know, all this extra time to do a cruise and all that kind of stuff. I work for nice things, and if I got to work 60, 70 hours to get nice things, then just check your program. That's all I'm saying. Mr. Shepard, behave a little better. But there will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. I would like to make this divorce legal now. I'm done. Don't want no more. Finish finito down the block. Period. Sherry's ready to go ahead and get this divorce over with. So am I. I think we're better off as friends, being co-parents, but as far as relationship, I think it needs to be completely dissolved.